Evolution is the central principle in biology and dominates our options. If we begin our psychoneurobiological journey at the moment of conception, we already have several billion years of biological prehistory that is packaged to explode in this moment of conception in the joining of the sperm and the egg. This prehistory begins with a different type of cell called prokaryotic cell, which is a cell that does not have a nucleus. These cells first formed about 4.6 billion years ago at the beginning when the earth was formed in a nutrient-rich primeval ocean and salty sea. Simple organic molecules made from carbon were probably produced under these conditions and eventually there developed organic molecules that became part of the first single cells. These sun-worshipping single-celled organisms quickly gained dominance over the planet and probably practiced a crude form of photosynthesis which allowed them to survive. The simplest forms of life are solitary cells that propagate by dividing in two. This type of single bacterial cell is called prokaryotic, which means pre-nucleus. Then it is estimated that a billion or so years later in one of the great mysteries still unsolved in biology, multiple celled higher organisms called eukaryotic cells began. We are all eukaryotic cells as are all animals and nearly all plants that exist on the earth today. Eukaryotic cells such as ourselves are virtual cellular cities in which groups of cells perform specialized functions and are linked by intricate systems of communication that begin by those fiber-looking strands which are called microtubular structures. Rather than one cell living on its narcissistic own, eukaryotic cells needed each other and literally changed the face of the earth. It's the system of communication that begins between eukaryotic cells that may offer the structure for a contemporary insight into communication and consciousness. Eukaryotic microbiology flourished and formed new collectives which eventually found their way from water and air and branched into the multiple forms of plants and animal life that now populate the earth. One of the significant features of eukaryotic cells is that they are primarily made up of these microtubular structures. Roger Penrose and Stuart Hammerhoff argues that these microtubular structures, which are the structures of all cells and part of the neuron in the brain cell, are actually older than neurons and inside of them. They may be the fundamental unit of the brain and the mechanism for consciousness. These billions and billions of microtubular structures could provide the location for collective quantum effects that would have computational power and provide mechanisms for quantum coherency that is necessary for the unified communication and location for primal consciousness. Humans are made from eukaryotic cells. Let's begin with sperm cells that are streamlined for mobility, speed, efficiency, and have a strong tail to propel them through aqueous mediums to deliver the DNA to the egg. From the female comes 23 pairs of matched chromosomes, including one pair called XX, and from the male, 22 pairs plus one 
mismatched pair called XY. By definition, the male sperm travels and the female egg is more sedentary. Nature's functional way has provided the egg the raw material for growth and development with a protective wrapping which is non-mobile. After the sperm delivers its half of the DNA, the head and the tail break apart and the two cores of the tail are called centrioles. Centrioles are the motor power that navigated the sperm on the journey through the fallopian tubes and then now become the force that divides the cell in half in a process of cell division called mitosis. Notice how the centrioles are the two dots above the nucleus. Then the two centrioles pull apart the DNA strands as they duplicate themselves in preparation for cell division. In some mysterious way, before the cells divide, the centrioles, which at this time are at opposite ends of the cell, have now each reproduced itself. This was startling to me that the male had its own creation structure independent from the female. It's like the centrioles had their own DNA sequence that instructed them to make twin copies of themselves right before the cell divided. This is repeated billions and billions of times over until the DNA code, a template, produces its programmed life form. Thus each new cell, when it divides and is on its own, will have a complete set of DNA and a pair of centrioles. Centrioles seem to have their own intelligence and know when to move, where to go, and what to do. They are biomolecular structures that give guidance and orientation and are some kind of motorized intelligence. As Stuart Hameroff says, relevant to evolution is that centrioles provided eukaryotic cells, cells with a nucleus, a sophisticated cellular information processing and communication system. Centrioles, structural beauty, incredible geometry, intricate behavior, navigational command, and apparent origin as invaders from another kingdom add to their mystique. A possible conclusion is that centrioles are intelligent nano-engines who jump shipped from previous species to symbiotically upscale their lifestyle. By doing so, they have co-opted biology and in concert with other dynamic structures pushed intelligence to its current stage of evolution. End of quote. I wondered if these centrioles from the male sperm, these nano-engines of motorized intelligence that show up from the two tubes of the tail of the sperm and become the meiotic spindles, might be connected to the twin heroes that show up repeatedly in cultural myths. The neurons in the brain are filled with centrioles and microtubular structures as well as the axons which send the electrical impulse to other neurons. As Penrose and Hammerhoff state, if it is microtubulars that control the activities of the brain, then there must be something within the action of the microtubulars that is different from mere computation.